February 23rd, 2011. Hello. I will be writing on this blog, because I am researching a show called, Happy Happy. One of the main reasons why I'm researching this show, is because I've been fascinated with missing TV shows, episodes, and movies. Like most people who research missing episodes, I'm hellbent on finding London After Midnight, the 108 missing Doctor Who episodes, and him, the 1974 film, where a man has a sexual obsession with Jesus. Even though I should help the search for any fragment of the missing episodes and films, I'm going to research this one series for now. Another reason I want to research this show, is that I had an experience with it around 2001. It was around 8 in the morning. My younger brother, who was 7, was watching a local station during its child TV show block. After a dubbed over Blue's Clues, it started to air a show called, Scast Live I.I.E. Blotto, or Happy Apple. I can barely remember the episode's plot, but it was about this apple who was trying to help a kid, named Nathaniel. It felt sort of low budget, but since my brother liked the episode, I didn't mind him watching it. The only thing that made me dubious was this evil smile, that the apple did in the middle of the episode. From what I gathered, in the first weeks of Noggin's existence, this happy happy show began production. Its plot was about a giant clay apple with arms, baby blue eyes, and large dark green lips being held up by a bent rusty stick. He would go around in a white 1996 Ford Winster, helping children when they got injured. As the show kept going, the episodes started to become more unusual. For one example, Happy Happy would often stare at the viewers of the show with a deranged smile. It's also worth mentioning, that the series slowly got more violent as the series progressed. Happy Happy was one of the shorter shows on Noggin, with every episode being 10 minutes long at the most. They played in duets, making each full episode 20 minutes long, minus commercials. A couple of months after Happy Happy aired its first episode, Nickelodeon cancelled the show, and it was never shown again on Noggin or Nick Jr. Even the much more appropriate episodes weren't shown for whatever reason. However, some parents did record the show, but they were VHS copies. Of those said VHS copies, only a few survived through the years. Many of the tapes had been destroyed, either due to neglect or disgust, or were simply misplaced and thrown out by accident. However, some copies of the show were reportedly stolen by a shadowy figure. I was one of the lucky people to own a copy of the episodes. Yesterday, when I did some winter cleaning, I found an old DVD with H.A. episodes written on it. I had a feeling that I knew this abbreviation from somewhere, I did some research on what the H.A. meant. My first choice was the forum about missing episodes or films, that I normally go to. When I entered the missing episode section of the forum, the first thread I saw was one named, H.A. What's this? A woman posted the thread, who had, like me, found a VHS with the initials H.A. on it. As I read the thread more, I found out that the initials on the disc stood for Happy Happy. This instantly reminded me of the weird low-budget show that I watched with my brother in 2000. In the replies, the users claimed that there are no known DVD copies around. I'm not sure how the disc got there though. I certainly don't remember owning a disc that looked like it. After viewing the thread, I went ahead and put it into the disc drive, hoping that it would work. Thankfully, the disc did work, and it instantly cut to the intros of the episode, with no menus or anything. Happy Happy's intro song had the same tune as Mary Had a Little Lamb, or London Bridge is Falling Down. And it went something like this. Happy 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 he helps kids all day. Happy 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 he helps kids all day. Episodes 1 and 2 were called, Happy's Vacation, and, Hurts Happy, respectively. Happy's Vacation was exactly what you'd expect, Happy Happy goes on a vacation to the beach, heals injured kids, and even talks down a bully into not hurting a child. 
Hurt Happy was about Happy's stick getting broken, and the kids teaming up to help Happy Happy, by giving him bandages and fruit. Nothing seemed out of place when I first saw it, but when I saw it a second time, the episodes looked questionably odd. When Happy was driving his van to the beach in Happy's vacation, a few seconds skipped. At first, I ignored it, saying that it could be a scratched DVD. But when I checked the disc, it had no scratches on it whatsoever. Also during the fruit scene in Hurt Happy, the kids gave him an apple for whatever reason. It could have been a mistake by the producers though. Finally, I noticed some things in Hurt Happy that looked out of place. In Happy's van during the intro of Happy's vacation, there was what looked like the border of the Hope poster, but it was so out of frame that it could have been something else. At the end of Hurt Happy, there was a news broadcast about a 9.0 earthquake that recently struck Japan. Happy responded. Oh no! If you want to help the Japanese, call this number. And a 1-800 number appeared. I thought those were just coincidental. Well I was wrong. Episodes 3 and 4 were stranger. The intros of these two episodes were removed, but I found out that episode 4's name was, Nate Needs Help. This struck me, because this was the very same episode I saw with my brother, but in English. Episodes 3 and 4 were missing a few scenes, and overall, more disturbing than the first two. Episode 3, near the 510 mark, is when Happy Happy does his first evil smile for 25 seconds. A scene that could send chills down anyone's spine, was the boo-boo part in Nate Needs Help. Happy aids Nate, who has a bruise on his knee. He looks at the camera, giving off the same evil smile that I remember from 2000, and says. What does Nate need for this boo-boo? For 30 seconds, he stared at the camera, motionless, with his soulless baby blue eyes locking onto anyone watching. Finally, he broke the silence by saying. That's right, a bandage. Why did he need that long to speak? I will never know. Also, the out-of-place objects were getting more noticeable. It Nate needs help, the radio plays what sounds like a country cover of Hot and Cold, which was made in 2008, and very out of place for a kid's show. February 24, 2011 I watched episode 5, which had a few differences from the first four episodes. Firstly, it had Happy on a rustless, but still bent, stick. Secondly, this episode was somewhat disturbing. The theme song played, and the name of the episode is revealed as, Monkey Bar Mishap. It started with Happy Happy in his van, driving to the playground, when he sees a kid crying near some monkey bars. Once he parks the van and goes to the monkey bars, Happy finds out that the kid had fallen off of them, cutting his little finger open. Happy Happy said, What does Jake need to heal with kids? He gave off his evil smile at the screen for a couple of minutes, enough time to read a page of a book, preferably the Bible, to him. Like Nate needs help, his soulless baby blue eyes watched over anyone in the room, like Big Brother. He said, That's right. And Happy puts a bandage on Jake's finger. After getting hugged by Jake, Happy drives away in his van. It skipped to episode 6, which had a better chance of being aired on Wonder Shows and then Nick Jr. In the episode called, Never Run With Knives, a kid was running with a knife facing up. The knife was a rubber prop, because the blade was flopping around a lot. The kid got cut, and held his hand over the wound, crying. As blood began to come out of the kid's wound, Happy parked his van, gave a normal smile, and said. Hey kids, he shouldn't have carried the knife facing up, while running. However, he did heal him by putting a bandage over the wound. The kid got happy, and he said. Remember kids, never run with knives facing up, or scissors for that matter. Always walk with knives and scissors facing down. Happy took the kid to his van, drives off, and the credits played. However after the credits roll, the episode takes a very disturbing turn, when Happy comes back in his van, the kid missing, and says. Hey kids. If you find me in my van, just talk to me and I'll take you away, ha <laughs> ha. Episode 7 began with Happy on the playground, but he wasn't playing with the kids or helping them. He was just staring at them, with that unsettling smile I hate so much. A group of kids is playing with jump ropes, when Happy walks over to them. 
He calmly tells them something, but I could barely hear what he said. From what I heard, I could only make out. Hello. Happy. I. How. Me. Please. I could see where this was going, as the kids walk with Happy into the bushes of the playground. Loud violent screams are heard for almost a minute and a half, until Happy begins to drag three bloody bodies to his van. I couldn't believe it. For the rest of the episode, he does that damn death smile. Why did they use that look so much? It was almost like he could climb out of your TV, grab you, and murder you slowly and painfully with a rusty knife, but he couldn't. I moved on to episodes 8 and 9. This time, the episodes were so violent and shoddy that they couldn't have aired on Noggin at all. Episode 8 had Happy Appy take a kid into his van. For half of the episode, flash cutting could be heard, and so could loud screaming, which turned into gurgles. As the scene progressed, blood splatters on the windows began to appear. Eventually, Happy emerged from the van, and did a death smile, until the end of the show. Like episode 8, episode 9 was gory and violent. But this episode was so coincidental and violent, that I couldn't believe Noggin would even allow it, unless it was some sort of hijacking. It starts with Happy Appy walking around the playground, when two kids ask him what the cycle of life is, so that they could complete their homework. He proceeds to tell the kids about the cycle of life in frogs and plants. The kids said, Thanks Happy. Can you play with us for a bit? Happy agrees, and they start playing on the playground. When this happens, smoke starts to creep behind Happy and the children. It gets to a point where they start coughing, because of how dense the smoke is, so they turn around to see what was making the smoke. Happy gasps at the sight in front of them. Two towers were on fire and burning up. A few people are falling out of windows to escape the fire. There was a lot of screaming, falling debris, and a crashed airplane in one of the towers. Only the tail of the plane was visible, which was nearing the point of collapse. I could hear a faint whining noise at this point, and I think that it was the plane's engine, which was probably still on. Seven seconds later, the tail of the plane finally broke apart, with the largest piece of the tail getting and killing someone. During this scene, fire trucks could be heard trying to douse out the flames, but it only slows the flames down. The wailing of ambulances could also be heard, taking away the bodies of the people who jumped from the towers. It showed a weird guy on fire, falling out of one of the towers, screaming. Happy and the kids are seen again, but this time, they stood still in fear. The smoke kept getting thicker and thicker, slowly obscuring the trees and equipment of the playground. The debris from the towers fell around the kids and Happy, and a person ran up to them, and told them to run away from the towers before running off. When the older kid worriedly said, Happy Happy, why are the towers on fire? It cuts to a high rut floor, that was near where the plane crashed, which revealed a kid, that was under a huge piece of concrete, crying for help. Some other kids tried to help him by lifting the piece of concrete off him. He was screaming so loud, that it was almost heartbreaking. There were bodies and blood everywhere, and the pain and fear on the trapped kid's face were so realistic, that I cringed. After the shot with the kid trapped under the concrete, the younger kid turns to the side and says, Happy Appy, why are people running and falling from the towers? Happy Appy turns to the camera, a dead smile on his face, and very coldly said three words. Those three words will haunt me, as long as I research this show. That's natural, children. He took the two kids away from the towers, leaving the kids stuck under concrete screaming for help. When the credits rolled, the audio of the scene kept playing, and at the end, before the video cuts out, something collapsed, making a very loud noise that could scare anyone watching. I jumped out of my seat. Was Happy a death bringer in the form of an apple? Or was he a master predictor? If that episode somehow predicted 9-11, I have to watch episodes 10 and 11 to see if there was anything else predicted. I might not see any predictions though, and honestly, I hope not. Oh, and you want to know what happens when someone calls that tsunami aid phone number? Tomorrow, I'm going to go and call it. February 25, 2011. Hey, I called the 1-800 hotline mentioned in episode 3. 
It was a pre-recording, which I will transcribe for you. Hello. My name is Happy Appy. I am every kid's most helpful and favorite apple. If you want to donate, press 1. If you want to know about the earthquake, press 2. When I pressed 2, the hotline said this. An earthquake and tsunami have recently hit Japan, and we need all the help we can get. If you can donate 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 50, or $100, you will be a big help. Anyone who donates gets a happy happy badge. So I went ahead, and donated a dollar to the donation for the fun of it, by using an outdated bank account that I never used. It responded. Thank you for helping with the aid for the tsunami. Look in your mailbox in a week from now, because you'll get your happy happy badge. I'm wondering what earthquake happy predicted. Between 1999 and the current day, there were no 9.0 earthquakes in Japan. Since the 2003 Hokkaido earthquake was pretty close to when the episode was released, as well as the magnitude mentioned in the radio broadcast, I guess he was predicting that. February 27, 2011. Episode 10 was corrupt, to say the least. It started up, but it had no audio, and the first part was so badly compressed, that it was hardly viewable. The next part was just plain static for the rest of the video. Great, a missing episode, I thought. Episode 11, called, Happy's Trick, was watchable. The intro was just some weird offbeat carnival music, with Happy doing his death smile at the camera. The episode began with him in his van, driving on a winding road. As the episode went on, scars started to appear on his body. Eventually, Happy reached the playground, where many children were at play. He jumped out, looking like he was ready to abduct all of them, and said, Hey kids, who want to see Happy do a magic trick? Like brainwashed zombies, the kids cheered and ran into his van. Happy closes the door and drives away from the playground. After a few minutes, the van came back, and the side door opened, revealing a motionless and expressionless Happy covered in blood. I couldn't take it anymore. Happy was making me feel extremely nauseous for some reason, so I skipped to the end of the episode. From what I saw, the rest of the episode was him watching TV, and reading the news, with random zoom-ins at the newspaper. Why though? I'm guessing that they're predictions, like episode 9, but after that episode, I'm not going to go back and read them. There was a very brief scene where Happy began to stab a kid, but it quickly cuts out to Happy watching a scene on his TV, where the inside of a space shuttle catches on fire. Why the hell does the show keep showing scenes very reminiscent of future disasters? Once I had gotten to the end of the episode, Happy was holding a knife, covered with blood. The camera began to pan down to a table, which had a hand with cut marks laying on it. What was probably the most unusual thing about this episode, that happened after this scene. After a few seconds of the credits playing, it very suddenly cut to a black screen with text that said. If you get these DVDs, I copied the show over to them from whatever master tapes I could find. I wanted to preserve this show, so that the last few episodes weren't lost forever. Now you might be wondering one thing, how did Nickelodeon air all of those episodes? I don't know, they just did, that's what. If you want to know more about the show, including its fate, see me. KC. Thankfully, I had a good grasp on whom the KC most likely was, Kevin Seward Christiansen, a friend of mine. It wouldn't be out of the question, when I first met him, he did mention something about working with Nickelodeon until the end of the millennium. Wanting to learn more about the show's fate, I went over to his house. What happened when I got there was, to put it bluntly, odd. When I got to his house and rang the doorbell, nobody responded. The door wasn't locked, so I decided to come into the house and see what was going on. I heard a middle-aged woman crying upstairs, so I ran across the living room and up the stairs to see what was going on. Kevin's wife was in their bedroom, crying at a framed portrait of them together. I asked her what had happened to Kevin, and she replied with a very odd answer. Last night, someone or something took him away in his sleep. The police are trying to look for him, but they've come up with nothing, as usual. They've questioned me and searched our house for any evidence, but there's none. 
except for this scrap of paper. She reached into her pocket and pulled out a folded piece of paper. I unfolded it, and it revealed itself to be a low-quality photograph of the scarred Happy Happy during the natural scene. While I was at their house, I asked her how those episodes had managed to get aired on Noggin. That this man had drugged the producers. He was going to. She only managed to say that much before bursting into tears. I could only think that whoever that man was had kidnapped Kevin on the 26th. After comforting her, I left the Christiansen household and walked off. Once I started to get near my house, I was startled by the noise of a gunshot nearby. I instantly ran to my house, fearing that whoever kidnapped Kevin and killed his wife was trying to chase after me. Before I closed the door, I took one last glimpse at the bushes on the other side of the street. In one of them was a mutilated arm, with an unknown figure standing behind it. March 3rd, 2011. Hey, I wanted to know if anyone has any recordings of a happy happy episode. If you do, please send me an email containing a video of it. You might wonder why I'm asking this. Well, I found my disc in pieces on my desk, and no, I did not save the videos to my laptop. Oddly, the way it was broken was almost like a claw had slashed the disc into thirds. The paper with Happy Happy on it was nearby, with writing that said, No more evidence now, huh? I wonder who was angry enough to destroy my disc. March 4, 2011 The badge finally came in the mail today. It came in a small box that had, interestingly enough, a time stamp from 2000. I could only guess that Nickelodeon still had some leftovers from when the show was still popular. When I opened the box and dumped out the contents, the badge came rolling out, with a letter attached to it. The badge was made of plastic, had a silver bronze color, and depicted Happy Happy with a smile. On the back, Happy Happy Helper Badge, was imprinted in stereotypical army font. The letter had the following written on it. To my friend, you have helped us help the Japanese. Of course, let me introduce myself. Unarguably, you have heard of me on Nanyun. Can't understand what I'm saying. Well, I'll give you the answer. Happy 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 He helps kids all day. Now, where do I begin with this gift? Today, I have given you a nice batch, right from the old playground. How did I get these, you ask? Running across the playground, I tripped on a rock. I fell, but I noticed the ground was uneven. Undoubtedly, something was buried, so I dug the ground, and I found a crate filled with these badges. Now, it's time to be off. Watch Nandun at 8.30 AM, Central Standard Time, to see my new adventures. Love, Happy Aki. I checked the back for anything interesting. What I found instead were these two lines of gibberish. I don't even know what they are. March 5th, 2011. Today, I got an email from a man who claimed to be a user of WikiLeaks. He had heard about my research on Happy Happy, so he tried to find any documents related to the show. He did find one, which told employees at Nickelodeon to never air certain TV shows or movies. After browsing through a massive description of Cry Baby Lane and other shows, I found this block of text in the middle of the document. One show, originally named Happy Happy, was cancelled due to excessive violence and gore. The show depicted a personified apple named Happy Happy that taught kids how to handle certain injuries and, in an episode called Hurt Happy, Teamwork. On their last and only eighth episode, only an hour had passed, when Noggin began to remove all traces of the show. Children who had watched the show's final aired episode allegedly obtained symptoms of nausea and sleep deprivation. A 2003 report says the episode seemed to depict explicit imagery of the September 11th terrorist attacks, even though the episode aired in 1999. I'm getting a lot more dubious about this show. June 1st, 2011. 
First off, yes, I know that Happy Appy might have predicted that recent earthquake and tsunami. So stop sending me emails about it. To put it short, I'm back. Since my job involves working as a detective in the police department, I had to take a hiatus from this blog, so I could get paid. During this period, there were some trials involving the murder of Kevin Christiansen. However, they came to an abrupt halt when the arm they found disappeared one day. I bet that Shadow Man stole the arm. Anyway, I was looking up Happy Happy on YouTube today, when I found a video that said, Kevin Christiansen interview, audio only, so I watched it. Here's a transcript. Are you Kevin Christiansen? Yes. So, are you the one who worked on Happy Appy's clay model? Yes. How did you get the job for Happy Appy? I had just graduated from an art college in late 1998. I heard about Nickelodeon Studios, which were making cartoons. So I sent a resume, and a few weeks later, I got the job, and I was happy. Well, until the shit hit the fan. What happened on the day you made the Happy Appy model? Okay, so basically, we had to design a cute looking puppet for the show. We started with a rusty stick that was lying around on the floor of the studio, made an apple out of clay, and stuck it on the stick. We added baby blue eyes, as well as pupils, so he would look cuter and less frightening for children, huge green lips, and clay arms. Finally, we added a stem and a leaf. We thought it was perfect for the show. Who voiced Happy Happy? I don't remember his name, but I do remember who he was from. It was a show called Fright House Screamers, where four teenagers would spend the night at haunted places. What happened to Fright House Screamers? When they were filming the fourth episode, one of the teenagers was found dead in the place they were doing. Besides, the show sucked ass. Was the voice of Happy the teenager who got killed? I'm pretty sure not. Back on topic, why aren't there any surviving copies of Happy Happy? That's a good point. See, Nickelodeon owns the tape somewhere, but they're not going to release them for a long, long time. There have been bootlegs, of course, but none showed the episodes after episode 11, which is weird. How many episodes of Happy Happy were there going to be? Two full 26 episode seasons. They only showed 8 or 10 of the first season before Happy was cancelled. However, my friend Jim says there are two seasons, but he was very drunk when he said that. Besides, I don't trust him at all. Do you know any of the other crew who worked on Happy Happy? I only know Jim. June 6, 2011. Dear God. I've had some feverish nightmares of Happy Happy, ever since I saw those last episodes. The dreams range from Happy doing his death smile for hours, to him brutally murdering a kid off camera. Not only that, but I've become paranoid about apples. If I see one in my house, I eat it as quick as I can or throw it away. I have seen the mysterious figure more, whether he's sitting on the side of a hill, or standing near some trees. It never seems to leave me alone. However, I can at least describe his appearance. First off, he can't be made of shadow, because he has some sort of face with a mouth. However, his mouth is locked to one expression, which happens to be Happy's death smile. I'm going to sound weird for this, but I wonder if he's happy. No, he can't be. There's a fine difference between this figure and Happy Happy, a child-sized apple. Oh well. Here's more about the stalker's body. He looks like he's slightly taller than me, for reference, I'm around 1.87 meters, and looks about midweight for his height. If he keeps appearing, I'm going to have to board up my house. I'm not sure what his problem is, but if he doesn't stop, I am going to call the cops the next time I see him. June 11, 2011. Great, just fucking great. How the hell do I put this in short? Right now, I'm at the library, which could very well be the only place in Aberdeen that has a free-to-use computer. It's been five full days since I last encountered the figure, and that bastard has some sort of problem, because he burnt my house down. Oh yeah, he burnt the entire thing down for no reason whatsoever. I did manage to save some things from my house, like my laptop and the Happy Happy badge and letter. Even then, I feel like I've released some sort of bullshit curse from watching those episodes of Happy Happy, and the library is my only hope spot. 
Thanks to that figure, I'm not even going to research more on this show anymore. After I destroy the badge and letter, I'm going to close down this blog. Or, better yet, I should kill that fucker for what he did. I don't give a damn if I break the law and get sent to jail. However the figure has to pay for what he has done to me. However, I'm not sure if the figure burned down my house. I didn't see his figure near my house, so it could have just been a chimney or electrical fire. So, you know what? Forget what I said about closing down the blog and killing the figure. I'm going to treat the fire like it was natural and keep researching the show. Don't expect me to act nicely in the following months though. Bye.